It was like a light bulb. I can be that big, be that strong. I don't have to diet all the time, and I don't have to pose on stage. I'm going to try this shit. I want to go back and... How did you get into the sport? My first year in high school, I wrestled at 98. I was actually scared to go out for football because I was so small. I was 4'11", 98. And by the end of my sophomore year, I saw Kaz compete on TV in powerlifting. They still had it on TV. Um, but I had, in, in like 1980, I had tried my first bodybuilding contest. And that's before they even posed the music. And like in the senior class, Lance Dreher was there. Uh, Sergio Oliva was at his biggest and he was in the audience. And I took like ninth or something in my class in the teenage division. What did you weigh? I mean, if you wrestled 90, not, not, not 198, 98. I don't know. I was probably about 130 pounds. Okay. And then in um, when I saw Kaz compete on TV, it was like a light bulb. Wait, I, I could be that big, be that strong. I don't have to diet all the time, and I don't have to pose on stage. I'm going to try this shit. Mm -hmm. And I maxed out twice a week with just a belt on till I hit 500 pounds in the squat. I still had, like, skinny little legs bending over in the squat, and uh, I just fell in love with it. It was like a duck to water. Mm -hmm. uh, I started off in my basement. Then I was at a Chicago health club, which ended up being Bally's. Mm -hmm. So it was a health clubish, and um, then I ended up when I got even more serious. I trained at a guy named Francis Rudiger in Joliet in his garage, where a bunch of lifters trained. How long did it take you from that first meet to be in that group of people? 1980 was my first meet. In 1984, I, I was probably a little over 150 pounds. My first meet by 1984, I was a full 181, and I won the IPF Worlds. Yeah. That, I mean, you're fast tracking really. It you know, jumped really quick. It came really fast, yeah. right? So you're training with a group of power lifters and they see, obviously, you have potential. Mm -hmm. And then they have to, what, just dump you in a local meet? Because you have um, to qualify. It was, it, was, it, was my, it was just my choice. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I don't even know how I qualified. It could have been because the, the teenage nationals, I took second in. I didn't know how to pick my numbers. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the YMCA nationals when there was only a couple federations and Gary Benford used to run them. And that's how I, I, I believe I, I, I qualified for the, for the nationals. And, uh, my first one at 165, Bob Wall from Ohio. Yeah. He had just won the IPF worlds and set a world record in the squat and I beat him. Yeah. I used to train with Bob. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's and he, he, he tells that story, yeah. you know, cause he was, he was doing very well. He was, then, he was a great like squatter. Out of nowhere comes this fucking kid. Yeah. Just, just I think we, we squatted around yeah. the same, I benched more and yeah. then I pulled, I think 683 at that meet or something pretty easy. Yeah. And then just, you know, it goes, then it just exploded there. when I gained a little more weight. Yeah. So it's to put some contacts back into those meets then. Right. So it's, I started competing in 83. So I kind of, kind of know, mm -hmm. not at the same level, but I know the equipment we had and I, I know what was there, yeah. right? So we're, for those that are trying to piece this together, powerlifting at the time did not have round systems, right? You just followed your Escalating weight, yeah. Escalating weight. And there were, there were good and bad associated with that. The racks, squat stands, at least for me, they were like fucking tires with a yeah. post on it. So when you walked out, you had to you, you had to step like two extra steps. You to had get to learn around. how to walk with the weight. Yeah. You had to get around the base of the squat stand. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't this two step thing. It was like five, one, two, three. Unless four. you wanted to take a super close stance. Exactly. Yeah. And so there was that obstacle there and the bars were the same, mm -hmm. you know, the all. Yeah. The just a Texas bars, power just, type bar or whatever yeah. it was. And the whip on the bars would start about four or five. Yeah. Right around there, you had to start learning. I remember on the way down with the squat, it was like a Eddie Murphy in Raw. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord of God, help me, please help me. Yeah. Your whole body shaking like this, and you almost got to stop on the bottom, let it settle, and then come yeah. back up. You, you learn 
I did. I'm, you at a, at a much higher level. You learn how you got to be smoother coming out of the rack, you know, so it doesn't have that chance, yeah. you know, to bobble. Small steps, but still clear. Be tight because if you didn't, I mean, and would, if you started too fast, it would start whipping right away. Yes, and you learn how to time the whip, the reverb, or whatever. Yes, yeah, you the, the, you time the, mm-hmm. the way down and then back up. The benches were narrow. Oh, you that's know, murdering so it was, people's shoulders. Yeah, so you, that was a weird, a weird situation there as well. And I mean, platforms didn't have carpet; it was wood, so it's, yeah. you know, you would slip and you know all that other kind of shit there. And it was, and there was at the time. I, maybe the AAU was around. For me, all I knew was the USPF. Yeah. Right? I re- I never competed in the AAU. It yeah. really was like way down and very um, obscure at that point. It was yeah. way smaller. It was pretty much just the USPF, yeah. mm-hmm. right? And that was it. And it wasn't, I don't know the exact year. I don't, at some point it split and it was before I qualified. The for ADFBA the started. And then the APF. You know, so mm-hmm. those two migrated. The, the APF really started in 85 after the Nationals. Ernie first started it as the AMPF to represent the Masters because they weren't getting as much credibility in the IPF. So he started it for the Masters. And then the regular open APF started in 85 after the Nationals. Now, were you training with Ernie at that time? I would go down on Saturdays and do my deadlift routine. When he had him, uh, Dennis Reed... Bill Sino, who are all world record holders, yeah. all, most of those guys would do all three on one day. Mm-hmm. And I would just come and do my deadlift routine and all my assistance work. Now, when that split happened was, because I remember when the split, it wasn't really a split, but I remember when there was, Louis was trying to decide between the APF and the IPA mm-hmm. and half the guys went one way, the other half went the other way. Was there pressure being put on you to go to the APF? Or no one, just no one ever asked me to do anything. Okay. So it was you were just sticking with yeah. I just went with some buddies. Yes. Yeah. So it was, in other words, you because that became a weird, a weird time, right? Because now you're going to have two worlds. Yes. Right, and you're going to have two nationals. Well, it, it was it was one worlds that was kind of real, and one worlds that just had a few misfits in it, yes. which was the APF at the time. Yeah, or WPC. Yeah, right. but I, I I only went to have fun with my buddies. I yeah. just wanted to lift and have fun. I didn't care okay so as as we move through getting like the mid 80s you know it at what point in time did the round system come into play it was still there in 85 at the nationals it it had to be 86 or 87 at the latest it was right there how did that change your competitive strategy it didn't it didn't no I was you. You just had to be in shape. Yeah, but well, well, your squats would have been up there, right? So you would have been towards the end. Yeah. Right. So at that point, you were following yourself, right, or close to it. Yeah, I, I, I actually had to, to do it. that in in eighty four at the nationals that Pacifico ran. I had my first attempt was seven forty nine, and then Buddy Duke, who was one ninety eight, he went, and then I had to go right after him. And then I took 793, which weighed out to 791. And back in those days, the weight couldn't stop on the way up. And it stopped, and then I finished, and I got reds, and I had to follow myself and pull it again. Which was what? Five minutes, maybe? Two minutes? Uh, uh, I don't even think One minute five. to yeah. call your yeah. attempt in and three minutes to go. So Yeah, four minutes. Yeah. So you had, in, in that case, that scenario, you had all three attempts yeah. within 15 minutes. Yeah. Right, which is now the average time of a flight. You, yeah, if yeah, if it's actually longer than a whole. It's uh, fifteen minutes is, yeah, almost a flight. It can be. Yeah, where it's, I, I remember watching, like, Dimmel. You know, have to follow himself, and I suck. So I was at the beginning as a teenager following myself, thinking, man, if I could just get. If 50 pounds more, I could get five people in between me, which would give me more rest. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So you would never call like the even number, like never call 400, call 405 because everybody else is going to call the 400. Then you can go after, mm-hmm. you know, so there was that strategy. You had to time it. 
that kind of went in. Hopefully, into no that. one changed their attempt. Yes, exactly. Well, yeah, that's that, that's another factor that kind of played into that as well. 